So for uh, completing the, the application, or the form at least, this specific form, uh, we should take some care about the form submission. Uh, like we already said, uh, we are uh, we we may you know uh, handle the on submit event by the form element. In the case where we are using the native form submission button, input type equal to submit, or uh, like we are doing, we are uh, using a, a custom button, and so we are uh, handling the on click event on that button. Is the same. Are the these are the ways on which by which a form may be submitted. First of all, we must prevent the default uh, submission of the form itself, so that we can uh, we don't lose the application, we don't lose the state of the application, uh, and the loading of the page. And then, of course, before doing the real action, we should do some uh, validation of, of the code. Okay, um, we learned some of HTML validation, uh, with validation by HTML5 attributes uh, back when we didn't know uh, about React. Where we could set, you could set attributes on a, on form elements uh, to do some checks, some validation checks, and this can still be done. Um, the problem is that uh, uh, the validation by the browser only works in uncontrolled mode, and and, and while uh, while we are working with contr control components, so it's a bit tricky of uh, making it work, and um, so we rely on manual validation of the state uh, variables. There are some libraries that will help you for doing that. For example, I, uh, we uh, suggest a link of one possible validation library um, that uh, uh, is able to check for some patterns for the validity and so on. Uh, so it's a very simple library with some uh, uh, predefined uh, patterns and uh, will tell you true or false so without you having to write a lot of tests or, or regular expression or something like that. This is a very simple library that you can use uh, internally uh, in your in your application, or maybe there are also other, other solutions that, uh, um, um, that are more structured, basically. Hmm. But uh, for the moment, let's just try to understand what we, what we need to do, okay? Um, what we need to do is... Uh, uh, Let's do some validation. So uh, let's say let valid equal to true, and then let make a set of tests. For example, if course course is uh, null, is an empty string, which means that the user didn't modify it, or a score. Is an empty uh, sorry equal equal uh, score is an empty string or uh, date is still an empty string then we can set uh, uh, value to false uh, then we can uh, try to convert the score into an integer, okay? To converting uh, um, the, the score state uh, and see if the integer value is uh, a number between uh, zero, uh, between 18 and 30. So uh, let we make compute uh, score number. Score right now is a string. We can compute a score number by doing, I don't know, maybe, for example, score oh, uh, zero plus score should work. And uh, or any other trick to also oh, plus score usually. Any other trick to convert a string to an integer. And we control if the score number, um, if not score number is uh, um, less than 18 or score number is greater than 30 then valid is equal to false and so on we can do ma many other checks okay um, basically what what also tells us sorry to Create, let's create the exam object only after we did all the validations. 
and at this point since we have a score uh, as an integer we could use it uh, to create the object so that we have an, an integer number and not a string in the second position um, and so at the end we will have uh, two options if uh, it's valid okay we, okay here i have to add more checks uh, that we can add uh, offline also just not to steal too much time for the class and if it's valid we can actually create the exam object and add it to the list otherwise and this is the interesting part otherwise what are we supposed to do okay um, we, basically we don't we don't do anything we could do nothing but it's better to write an error message somewhere. Okay. Okay, so uh, we can think of uh, displaying an error message in the component itself uh, when uh, when the user tries to add something which is not valid. Um, let's. Uh, uh see how, how we can do that uh, we should add uh, maybe some uh, some message here maybe uh, uh below the below the button we could have a a, a, a short text sorry with the other message displayed here maybe in a in, in a different color or whatever right now we still have something that is still very ugly uh, and so if there if there is an error message it will display it otherwise not and what is this error message it should be another state variable of other of our uh, of our component so const error message set error message use state and uh, undefined is okay initially we don't have it okay and uh, if something is not valid uh, we can here make a set error message to uh, errors in the form. Of course, this is not the right way to do it. Uh, the right way will be to, to write uh, uh, different messages according to actually what went wrong. Okay, but just as a first step, again, and uh, um, we must also remove this message when actually the, the data has been corrected so in this case uh, if it's valid uh, we can reset the error message to an empty string for example so actually what we are doing here is that uh, if we are trying to click on add with the incomplete data we get a message here once we complete the data 20 and one date uh, the exam is added and then the error message disappears oh sorry yes i will forget um, okay so basically everything we are doing everything by hand actually uh, let's let's see it again so that i i will also um, reply to the questions first of all we must uh, uh, with the prevent default uh, we uh, avoid that uh, click on a button could reload the page okay because by default a button in a form when you click it it will try to send the form to the server for processing we don't have a server we don't have to any processing to do on the server it's just an internal uh, logic and so we don't want the browser to make a new http request for sending the form um, and so this is the, um, the, the, the goal of this first instruction, okay? preventing the page from reloading and losing the application state. That is what the button would normally do, hmm? this for submission. 
um, second uh, we have some data that we want to to store in our application and so we must do all the a series of checks uh, with the, all the validity well the possible validity checks that we we, we have in mind uh, we can do it by a series of if or, or checks or regular expression or using some validation library okay it's your choice uh, so that uh, you are sure that uh, if uh, all the checks are passed uh, you are going to create uh, a sensible and sane object and something which is uh, correct okay to pass to the to the add exam method so we are uh, uh, we are sending out of the form only something that has been uh, say correctly validated and we are sure that something is valid okay otherwise uh, we should have a, a feedback mechanism for for telling the user what what went wrong okay uh, a, a very crude way is uh, having a, a, a span here probably we, we would need a span to to set some attributes like for example um, well maybe we can have the style uh, with a color color red for example and uh, so that we can show this error message in red color or something like that um, and so it will it will appear if you make it maybe 88 for example you can try to add okay the message will appear in red okay you can of course make it nicer or make it uh, you know uh, Marco is asking whether we can uh, write some HTML in here of course you can do whatever you want but the HTML I would prefer to see it in the in the render and here having just a string or, a, or, or a, an array of strings with the various possible errors uh, all of this uh, now you, we should think about the usability so usually where something is wrong you have an error just uh, on the side okay I, I will have a message here is 88 is out of range right written just beside the wrong value okay so having a message there is a very ugly and crude way of doing that uh, we should try to be more user-friendly by telling which error which was the error and where it was okay um, uh, Jacopo is also suggesting that uh, having the score as an input equal to text uh, prevents uh, or allows the user to enter also um, letters or uh, free text so it suggests uh, that the score could be a number field hmm? so that the browser itself could uh, uh, prevent and this is a good idea actually uh, prevents uh, uh, from entering or actually not doesn't really prevent it uh, because it can it can be done in any way but the browser understands in a way that you are trying to enter a number okay so you can change it but actually you are not really uh, forbidden for entering something which is not a number the, the browser will help you basically what we have what we are doing is, and this is a problem is that the browser is already able to do some validation and sanity check on numbers but with the on change event we are in some way preventing the browser for, for doing its its job so we are we have a component which does less validation than it could do because we are controlling it and so we are not using the logic that is already inside the browser but if you use a number for example we can use a minimum value uh, which is uh, maybe 18 uh, and the maximum attribute uh, which is uh, 30 and uh, in this case uh, if I reload the page uh, I would see that if I use the spinner it will give me the numbers so uh, I can make many uh, many little improvements uh, to make it better or okay, I could also make a, a drop down menu with the number from 18 to 30 whatever you want okay but at the end uh, uh, we should always be able to uh, to to do a final check about uh, the, the value that we want to to have okay um, also the date probably should not be in the future or whatever okay so uh, there's a lot of, uh, of checks that we should that we want to do so which checks to we, we want to do and how to tell them to the user it's uh, our um, our choice um, just remember 
that uh, when we are doing that, uh, that uh, uh, the return expression uh, should be uh, functional, okay? Should be uh, only computed from the form properties, from the component properties, and from the state variables. Uh, for example, it would not be good to have something like, uh, for example, here, if valid, then write this, uh, otherwise write uh, just something else, okay? So it's eternal expression that, okay, if it's valid, then I uh, put this method, otherwise I don't put anything. Why it's not work? Because valid is not a state variable. So in this case, we also have um, an error because valid has been defined here inside this event handler. So actually, it's not visible from outside the event handler. So we have an, an undefined variable here. But even if we de declare it here, like, like here, let valid equal to true, uh, it's, it would be wrong to use it, OK? Because uh, uh, this function is not executed in, in sequence, but it will be executed when the event loads. So the value of valid, okay, when this code is executed, is the, in, is the value when the function exam form is called and is not, will not be the value when the event tender is called. Okay, so always remember. Uh, when you uh, use some variable in the in the rendering part, in the return of the, 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 the JSX and the HTML, all, you are constrained only to use properties and state variables. Everything else is wrong because it will have the wrong value when the code is executing. Okay? So I was, try, I was tempted to use valid, but then I remember that it cannot be done unless you transform valid into a state variable. But then you will have different uh, uh, problems because if here, instead of valid equal to false, you do, do something like set valid to false, for example, okay? If valid was a state variable, then it's another type of problem because the var uh, valid value here in 86 would not be updated because you remember that this set valid is asynchronous. Okay, so always remember what is synchronous, what is a, a normal variable inside a callback, and what is a state variable that persists in the component but is will only be updated asynchronously. So it's uh, uh, it's it's easy to to make mistakes in this case by confusing what is the current value of a local variable inside event lender and a state. So let's try to really keep our mind clear. If we are setting something, if you are doing some set, set date, set score, we know that the value will be updated later on. So we cannot use it right now. If you want to update something immediately, that will be a just simple variable. And but this variable will not be, uh, we will not be able to use it in the, in the, in the rendering part. Okay. Um, okay. I want to address the comment by Nicolò. Uh, but in a different way than, one, than what it suggests. Um, Nicolò, you are suggesting uh, that you want to validate that the course here, the course code, is not yet, let's see in the page, is not yet one of the courses that are on the table. So, so you are saying a web application cannot be uh, given twice. Okay. So if there is something that is already in this table, it cannot be selected by the user. Checking this at validation time is uh, expensive and complex. Uh, uh, complex because uh, basically uh, we uh, we should pass to the exam form also the list of exams because right now the exam form only receives uh, let's see how where we are calling it only receives the list of courses. We should also pass the list of exams that we have so that the form can do the check. OK, uh, maybe a better solution is just not to show the courses at all. So only put, so uh, the better error validation is error prevention. 
it, I will make it impossible for the user to select one of these courses that are already there. How? Well, I don't show them. Okay, so if I'm not showing you the wrong choice, it will be impossible for you to do the wrong choice. Right? So the easiest way is not giving to the core, to the component, the full list of courses, but only a subset. So we can filter uh, all the courses. Uh, let me think uh, only where the course, where this course is not in uh, in the list of exams. So it means that uh, we can create the list of exam codes and check whether it's contained or not. Okay. So what we could do just for the sake of this validation, we could compute exam codes, which is just uh, the exam, uh, the props, uh, the exams dot uh, um, using, of course, the, the current one, not the props, uh, but the current uh, list of exams uh, map. Uh, let's try uh, just to exam just to return the exam course code okay so we have a list only of codes and so we can uh, here only where the course codes what well, do they call it exam codes sorry Uh, con uh, help me what is the function for uh, includes or contains or index of because I'm confusing uh, the different languages in JavaScript uh, is uh, uh, index of or oh. uh, I want to check whether an element uh, exam code contain I would write uh, exam code that contains uh, course dot course code But I'm not sure if contain is the right version. Includes. And sorry because I have a parallel course in Java and just finished one course in Python, so I always confuse the, the different names. Uh, includes, right? Mm -hmm. And you return a boolean. True or false? Yeah. Okay. So not includes. Mm -hmm. So I'm just uh, filtering those courses whose ex uh, course code is not contained uh, into the list of the exam code that are already in the table. Hmm? So if it works in our application, here, reload, uh, contains not a function. What is exam codes? Uh, you didn't write includes. Uh, yeah, <laughs> thanks. Okay. So you see that the list of courses right now um, is uh, doesn't have the courses that you already passed. So you can only select, for example, computer architectures, let's say a 29, and uh, let's select one date. I click on it, it will be added, and now computer architecture disappeared from the list. So this is a way of uh, preventing errors instead of detecting errors. As much as possible, if you avoid uh, some uh, wrong data to be entered at all, then you don't have uh, the problem of validating it. Hmm? If we click add it twice, computer architecture, no. So let me check, computer architecture, 25, date, add. If I, okay, if I, when I click a second time, it will be added because uh, It should it should disappear? Ah, because it was still remembered here. 
so we should of course write thank you when we actually set the exam we should reset this the state of the component okay so here when we add the exam we should immediately reset our components so set code set course to an empty string set a, a score to an empty string and set data to an empty string so that it will prevent reusing the data on successful uh, submission yeah we should reset everything to the default value so let's try again computer architecture 29 date add okay so i cannot if i re-add of course i have an error and i cannot reselect it hmm? so you see that <laughs> there are millions of possibilities of, uh, of making it wrong and you should, we should be able to catch uh, possibly as, as much of them as possible but this is the basic logic in which we we interact with the forms okay uh, we are assuming the responsibility for every behavior uh, of the form elements uh, by manipulating explicitly the state so uh, our manipulation of the state will be reflected by the by the elements of, of the interface and uh, ev everything that happens is our responsibility like we you say you were saying before uh, there's a lot of our responsibility on the on the programmer yes it is hmm? okay we need to also to check all the all the small details uh, if you want to do something more complex uh, there may also be some libraries that can help you so maybe there's a, a famous library which is called Form, Formic uh, that is able to do most um, a lot of this uh, automatic uh, code like uh, setting the state, uh, handing the on change and so on um, directly inside the library um, and uh, it's, um, it's basically uh, handles the local state itself in this library. So if you find yourself that you want to do or you want to learn something more complex, for, you may have a look at this library that automates some of the stuff that we are also already doing. But basically the, the idea are the same. So we need to understand what is happening with control components. After that, we may use some libraries to simplify our work. Uh, but it's just uh, something that uh, some some more small helper. Okay, um, I think that's all for for this example of the state. Uh, you will find in uh, in GitHub uh, where we have this uh, not uh, in this week six that are now became now today's examples are here in week six. If you go to the React scores we have a branch uh, which is called uh, uh, with form okay where we have a, a different version of the exercise that we already prepared and just i just wanted to show you that i implemented this part by using uh, um, bootstrap forms okay so instead of native html forms uh, if you want to have a look uh, i implemented the same logic without without validation yet uh, by using bootstrap forms uh, so you just have to to go to the react bootstrap documentation page and so see how the examples are done but uh, basically the idea is the same value and unchange rule they always rule option key and value is course code so the idea is the same the controllers are the same just the the, um, the react bootstrap components are a bit more complex and they give you a better layout than what we did uh, today so they are more good looking but the behavior is more or less the same okay so you see that in any case you have the value setting and the unchanged uh, setting uh, in this case i try to also use uh, they to store directly djs values inside uh, the state but storing djs or storing strings is more or less the same um, okay, there was this hidden attribute that I discovered yesterday. I forgot today, just not to show even the the, um, the choose uh, the first uh, say item in the form, so they will make it disappear. Uh, so just which is just an example that does exactly the same thing is in a, using the React Bootstrap library, and if you try to run it, you see it's better looking basically. Okay, the second topic for today which uh, you can imagine is something which is shorter 
and uh, I hope simpler, is about uh, um, context. Sorry, not the PDF, uh, but the PowerPoint. Um, so I just want to tell you something about context that may simplify um, the development of some type, uh, some type of applications, especially uh, when we realize that the React way of things or working uh, tends to uh, pass a lot of properties. Okay, so uh, we, w whenever we have uh, some components that are deeply nested into a tree, this component uh, includes that component, includes another one, includes another one, and so on, it may happen that this, we have a state variable here and uh, we need it here, down there, to render something. Okay, and so it, this means that we need to copy this as a property at every level down and copy it many levels down for all these components that really don't care, all these intermediate components really don't care about this value, value, but need to transport it so that it can be used where it's needed, okay? Um, the context is a way of, say, teleporting some property from a higher component to a lower component. So it's just a shortcut. Uh, it, does, it doesn't have anything, add anything really new Okay, it also gives you a mechanism for getting a steady variable from one component and storing it in a way, in a place, which is the context, with a context object that may be directly accessed by the lower components. So that all the intermediate components don't need to participate in this sort of propagation of values. Okay. So uh, if you need it, uh, well, it's, it's easy. Don't abuse it because the risk is uh, to put everything into a context and not and avoid localizing the state to the component where it's actually better managed. But uh, in some cases, some specific cases, uh, uh, it may be useful. For example, when you have some global state. For example, you have a website uh, with, uh, the, with the visual team that can be customized, dark, dark or light. So this will affect every element, every component. It should be dark or light, or the visual, or, or the theme, or the style. Uh, and so, uh, passing this variable across all the components, it would be very, very uh, expensive in terms of code. It's better to store this value in one place, and every component just, that needs to display something just picks that value there. Hmm? Uh, or whether the user is logged in or logged out, for example. Okay. So uh, we have a web, web page that needs to know, every component needs to know, for example, in our uh, exams, if I'm not logged in, I cannot modify, for example, the, the, the code. So every component, the form, the buttons, uh, the delete icons and so on, should know whether the user is currently logged in or not. And, but again, it's an information that is uh, uh, stored globally at the application level and needs to be accessed by a lot of different components and we don't want to pass it around every time and so these are the usual candidates uh, for for defining a context something with this that represents the global application state not values but let's say the state the configuration the, the, the modality in which the application is running so that different components may use this information if they need it okay how to implement this mechanism uh, actually quite easy uh, we have uh, uh, three different ingredients. So the ingredients for the context for making a content recipes are three. One is uh, we need to you need to create a new context object. So create. Uh, we have uh, we, in this picture we saw that uh, we have some context objects here that helps that doesn't contain the value, but helps with propagating it. So we need to create this object first. And creating a new context container, well, it's not really a container because it doesn't contain the value. A context, let's say, transporter, is done with this create context call. So you do a create context, and it will give you an object that you can call as you like, as you prefer. I call it the example context. And this object basically contains two different sub-objects that happen to be components, React components. 
one is called the provider component and the other is called a consumer component and these are the other the second and the third ingredients the second ingredient is the provider the provider is a, a node that is able to compute the value in our example this would be the provider because it will provide the value for this variable for, for the state variable so the provider is where the state is computed and then we have the third ingredient which is the consumer the consumer is the component here consumer where the value is needed okay so we create a context and we define who is the provider and uh, for every consumer node we can consume the value uh, the context provider is a component is a react component so you can instantiate it just in rendering and uh, the provider is a component that will inject a value this value will not, uh, likely come from a state variable normally okay um, so we are setting a value for the provider by using a local state variable from the top level component these this content uh, this um, provider will have some children and so this value will be available to all the children and the children of the children of this uh, provider okay so the value of a context is only available to the children and children of children but also the descendants of that provider node uh, and uh, when a node needs uh, to have uh, a value uh, it just needs to uh, consume this value and for consuming this value we can use two different techniques one is using the consumer component and so we are wrapping our node inside a consumer uh, or using a use context hook, a use context function that will give us uh, uh, the reference to that uh, uh, element. So bas basically, if we have uh, our component here, okay, that contains a state variable s, okay, and we have some children and children and children and children, and then we have a node where we want to use this value, okay, we first create the context. Then we define here a provider component with value equal to S. That, of course, so the, the, our component will define S, which is part of the state, and we'll have a children as a provider, and this provider will have other children. So all the children of provider have access to this value and this value is continuously updated whenever the state of, a, of my component is updated and if this component needs to have this value let's call it v we can wrap it into a consumer uh, component that makes a lot uh, say makes available to the value to the lower component and so on or the component itself may use a use state call so basically for setting the state we, ne we need to add an extra layer of components here and possibly an extra layer of consumers there um, we, we can so the code is very easily uh, very easy uh, the problem is that we, we need to create a context and make this variable accessible from both the provider and the consumer so probably it would be in a different file that is imported by both of them and uh, um, and uh, uh, and what is important is the reference to this object uh, let's just remember there are three ingredients one is the content itself the second is the provider and the third is the consumer so when we are when we are talking about the context object is the whole object and we are, we are talking about the provider and the consumer are just parts of this object they are properties of this object um, or there are some details uh, when uh, more providers are nested inside one, one, one another but there are something that 
uh, happens uh, rarely. So uh, I want to show an example with our uh, with our code so that you can appreciate what is happening. Uh, let me just uh, commit this. Uh, let me call the validation some validation commit so that I can, I can switch uh, I can switch branches I will push it later I have a okay with context okay another another uh, so what I wanted to do here is to add two the two buttons here that will uh, be able to enable or disable the actions and uh, uh, let the let's say privacy controlled information visible or not so we can hide or view the scores and we can uh, enable or disable the edit uh, uh, of the different functionality okay so what i did here was very easily in the app uh, i added two buttons uh, one button with the privacy uh, and the, the other button with the editable properties and these properties are just states uh, in the app okay so it's nothing special so let me just uh, run it just to show the code so right now I didn't do uh, I didn't show you anything new I just added these two buttons here view and edit and this button will uh, uh, to toggle between two different values. Don't look at the table below, right? Just the buttons. Okay, so these buttons are just uh, implemented by two state variables uh, and these two buttons uh, that uh, complement the value of the privacy or editable properties. Nothing new right now. Okay, what I want to do is that these state variables, privacy or editable, to be accessible by all the other components. For example, uh, the component that will render this part of the table needs to know whether we are in read mode or in edit mode. Okay? Um, so, what, how can I do that? I can define, I create a separate file that is called create context. When I create as many context variables as uh, the type of values that they want to propagate. I could have the context may contain everything a simple variable or a complex object it's up to you whether to consolidate everything into a big complex object or to make uh, many different uh, uh, context containers okay i created two of them one is called privacy mode and the other is the edit mode so the modality in which the application is running and then just exporting the reference to these objects from the provider point of view I, okay, this is a local state here. When the app is uh, generating the lower components, like the exam table, I am providing these context values to the exam table and all its children. So the easy way is to wrap, the only way is to wrap the children that needs, uh, the, 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 the component whose children need to uh, access the variables, the values, will be wrapped into providers, into context providers. So this is the provider for the edit mode, and the value that will be propagated to the children is the value of the, of the is a copy of the state variables editable. Whenever this state changes, the property of this provider changes and everything will be re-rendered in the exam table. Uh, and the same for provider. Okay? So what um, the, 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 the type of value that we are providing depends on the, on the context object. So edit mode is the container for propagating the editable property. Privacy mode is the container for propagating the privacy. Uh, they will all be called value. It's always value. So the name of the attribute is always called value, but it refers to something that the, con that the context container knows about. Okay, so with this trick, we created the context and we decided that we want to provide uh, a copy of the value of this context to all the children of exam table. You see that we can do this only from, from the component where the state uh, 
is defined. It wouldn't make much, much sense to propagate a property or a copy of the state. In many cases, uh, uh, people are uh, storing into the container not just the value, but also the setter property. Okay, so that the children can call the set editable or set privacy, or can or you can provide also a callback for managing this value to the children. It's up to you how much control you want to give to your children. Okay. But these are the, easy, the, the simplest case, we are just passing the variable. So what we are saying is that every children of exam table that needs to know the value of privacy or the value of editable can just pull that from the context and it doesn't need to have it propagated to the props. In fact, we are, in fact, we are not propagating them to the props. So let's move on the other side, on the uh, consumer side. So the provider we saw, okay, we see we here is just this code that we are show we are we are seeing now, okay, uh, nothing special, and the provider is just wrapping. On the other side, uh, we must define the consumer, which is the interesting part. There are two different ways of defining a context consumer. One is uh, wrapping the code that you want to render inside the consumer component. And this is a strange syntax because you are rendering a consumer component related to the context that you really want to render. Okay. And the children of this consumer will be a callback function that receives the current value of the context and then renders something accordingly. Okay. So we are rendering a consumer. This consumer will call a callback with the current value, and then you can decide what to render based on the value. Uh, let's see this in, in our example. On the components, uh, I used uh, the, yeah, the, the consumer syntax here in the exam row to decide edit mode, whether to show or to hide the, the, the icon buttons, okay? So to show or to hide the last column, edit or read. The Boolean variable called edit mode, oh, sorry, the, the context variable called edit mode contains the value that remembers the state of this button, okay? And so this component, the exam row, uh, will contain always the exam info, but it contains exam controls only if the editable property is true. So in order to access this editable, uh, this editable property, to pull it from the context, I just uh, instantiate a consumer for edit mode. Remember, edit mode should be accessible. Uh, edit mode was created in a separate file create context. This create context was imported in app, uh, sorry, in, the, in this create context was imported or the variable defined in create context was imported in app and also in components. Okay, so we create it separately and the both all the providers and the consumers should import the reference to this context object. Uh, the import syntax uh, uh, implies that uh, the module is only executed once. Even if it is, you import it many times, uh, it will be only be executed once. And so the second time you will just get a reference to the variable that have been created before. So you are not creating the context every time you import it. So because we want to have, we need to have here in the exam components, a reference to the object edit mode, which is the same object used here for the provider. OK, uh, so in our case, we have reference to the edit mode context. We are extracting the consumer component out of the edit mode object. And this consumer will uh, uh, call a callback with the current value of the value that was set here. And in this case, this value was the editable state variable of app, of the app component. So we are actually teleporting that variable from app into XM row. 
and well, well if it's true we will render the exam control uh, if it's otherwise if it's false uh, we will just render a, um, a text message okay um this is the first syntax uh, lorenzo will reply later right um the second me mechanism so the first me mechanism is uh, just wrapping and setting a callback you can do whatever you want inside this callback hmm? uh, the second option is to use a, um, a hook which is called use context i think it's easier to use uh, because inside your component you just call the use context hook function by giving as an argument the context object not the provider not the consumer just the object and it will return the current value of the object of the context itself and so you can use the value directly so you don't need to have the wrapping and the callback just this uh, use context will give you the value that you need so in our code i use this technique in the uh, so-called privacy mode privacy mode is uh, where's the code here Sorry. the one that will show or hide the score and the date so we'll change between showing the actual score or showing just a placeholder and this is inside the exam info row and you see that I call use context with the privacy mode privacy mode is again is the uh, object that has been created as a context so ingredient number one in the we are using the context object to the argument of use context of course use context is imported from react like use state we are importing that uh, from the predefined hooks of react and we have a variable i call the privacy mode that already contains uh, the, the value associated with that context so every time in app we are changing the privacy variable so here basically we are calling set privacy privacy will be updated in the state the change of privacy will update the value of the privacy mode provider and uh, automatically this exam info will be re-rendered because it refers to this context and it will be re-rendered with a new and updated value of this privacy mode and then i will use it to decide whether to render a placeholder or the actual value but this is just a, the easy part of what to do so again exam info may access this state variable from the app uh, directly by name and actually by referring the object instead of having all the property passed down uh, so basically it's uh, it's uh, it's not very complex to do you just have to remember to create this context and uh, define the provider uh, when you have the state that you want to share and define the consumer every time you need to um, you need to use it uh, and to use the value to to, to affect the, the rendering you may have multiple contexts if you want to provide more than one context you have to nest the providers like we did here nesting one inside the other and if you have to consume them you can uh, just call more than once use context if you want to use the hook or if you don't want to use the hook uh, you, you have to nest the different consumers one inside the other one callback inside another callback but it's normal javascript madness uh, uh, in this case so that's why also the hook the use context hooks is much uh, simpler in my opinion okay um okay uh also to answer lorenzo's question i will come to this slide uh, which tells uh, don't use context for programming laziness basically okay uh, basically context means uh, having global variables everywhere uh, uh, defining a sort of global variables okay only one can change these variables but if you send also callbacks down uh, then it'll um, uh you are giving every component the possibility of messing with your state okay so it's not a way of storing global information and giving away to everybody because then you lose control you have a, you will have a 
components that are no longer reusable because they will depend on that state to be defined in that way with that specific value so they will work in one application that can be transported to different applications this component will not be pure components anymore because they don't depend just on state and props but they will depend on state props and context and context is uh, you don't know where it comes from basically um, so uh, i think it's it makes sense to use it when uh, it uh, really uh, is it's done for so having global state of the application uh, some uh, may, uh, an object that contains the user attributes when you logged in well that's a, a perfect candidate because i we we don't know which components uh, will use it but probably every component will use will need some part of it uh, but these values all will will only you know, i mean change the the mode of operation of the of the um, of the interface so like uh, there are sort of switches or controls over the application actual data probably is best uh, not to be stored into the into the into the context um, and let's uh, let's store it into into the state basically let's leave it into the state and we can give a copy of the data only to those components uh, that we trust <laughs> uh, and that we are sure that we are they're going they're going good use of that uh, also let's not forget that uh, for now the state is inside one component but when we will move to client server application the state will be on the server so it's it pays off to be a clean interface about when i'm giving you a copy of the state or when are you asking me to change the current value of the state because the state needs to be changed on the server not just into the component so hiding that into the context will not be um, scalable when we move to a client server application we will need to redo it uh, uh, from scratch okay so it's a it's a it's handy it can save you some code especially from property drilling but uh, let's use it uh, you know just uh, sparingly basically hmm. uh, there are other mechanisms uh, there's some some links if you want to look about the inversion control of render properties there are many ways of trying to solve this problem okay uh, without uh, falling into global variables uh, finding different solutions so if you want to read more you, are, you have some some links here um, uh, Alessio is asking whether we, you could use a context in the big lab to indicate the currently selected filter uh, well uh, in this case you have uh, information that is only set in the filter components uh, let's say in the filter sidebar and will only be used uh, in rendering the list so it's actually information that is generated by one one component and used only by one component i don't know if it's worthwhile um, uh, defining a context just for that okay uh, in any case you need to have a state that contains the, the list of current filters okay because uh, since you have the state uh, um, to populate the context you need to have a state remember the context doesn't contain the value the context can only replicate and propagate some state value that you are giving so in any case from the filter side you need to, to do exactly the same have a state variable on a, on a father component and uh, um, and update the state on that father component the problem is just how you pass the, the value from this father component down to the table that renders the the uh, the list if you don't have many components in between if you only have a couple or two or three then maybe it's not uh, it's not worth the hassle creating a new a new mechanism uh, because you just need to pass it once but uh, anyway you you can do whatever you want the, the problem is that uh, just remember you cannot change a context from below okay you cannot have a tree like this uh, uh, with uh, a top level component here a component down here a component down there and you cannot use a context to transport a property in this way okay even if you have immediate imagine you have intermediate components there okay uh, you can only the context can only do this part from a high level component to a, a leaf component okay 
uh, the state that you have here will never be visible there. You need always to have the state up there. So for updating the state, uh, you, have, you have no other option that you, than using a functional callback, callbacks. So at that point, uh, the question is uh, whether this wannabe context uh, is needed by many components, uh, okay. Is it needed only by one or few components and these components don't have many layers in between? Well, it's not worth the complexity. This is just my opinion. Of course, technically you can do that, but there's a trade-off about something simple and something more complex. Um, so it's, it depends on how you organize your code uh, in general. Okay. Okay, I think that uh, you have the example of this uh, already um, again in the GitHub with this code that we, we, we are seeing together. If you go to the branch that is called with context, okay. You have the same code that is uh, uh, that we saw together right now, and we uh, and it's also the same code that is on the slides. So if you want to try and to play with it, uh, I just implemented two different uh, context uh, containers just to sh to to show uh, the different ways of making the consumers. From the provider side, it's the same. From the consumer side, you have the, these two different syntaxes to choose from. Okay. I don't believe it, but we are uh, two minutes ahead of time instead of being uh, late. So it's a first for me, and uh, I don't want to lose this uh, this uh, achievement. So if you don't have any questions, so you can I can say goodbye to you, and uh, we'll try to to discuss and decide what to do with the lab. So try. Try to keep uh, an eye on, on Slack in the next days uh, so that to define what to do on, uh, with the labs uh, on Monday to continue the, what we were discussing this morning early. Mm -hmm. Okay, so have a nice uh, end of the week uh, and uh, see you next week with everybody and on Monday with the labs. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bye-bye.